Hi, this is Mike. And I'm Steve. And you're watching Comics, Comics TV. TV. This is show number one of our second season. We'd like to welcome Jones Cable, who is now online with us. All we need to do is get uh, right around the area, get Adelphia, and we'll be set. We'll have half of Western New York, and we're going to continue spreading wider from there. Uh, we hope you liked... Uh, pay-per-view. Uh, pay-per-view, yes. We're going pay-per-view. We're going to... Hey, they're doing it for college students, college entrance. So why not pay-per-view for comic books? There you go. Um, let's see, what do we got to do? Oh, we're going to have all our, regu our regular features as we usually do. Our regular features include, include, include. reviews, previews of all new books, old books. Um, our convention mentions. We're going to have conventions. Uh, we've got quite a few this week, too. Um, Great interview. Oh, we've got an interview with Charles Barnett. Uh, he's a current artist, inker. On, uh, actually, he's just the anchor, but that is also the artist on ElfQuest. And uh, we've got a lot of other good things coming up. We will go right now and do our interviews. So let's yeah. go. Okay. Our reviews or previews. Previews. And top of this week's comics news. We've got all kinds of good stuff for you. Uh, first off, Defiant Comics' new, newest character, War Dancer, will be making his debut in a comic from Triumphant. It's another small press. Uh, actually, Defiant is a small press, although they've got some big, big names working for them. Um, let's see, which issue is not exactly known, although Dr. Chaos is, uh, it's a good chance that it's going to be the in, big hint. A good, in one of the Dr. Chaos issues. Uh, Possibly first or second issue, right off the bat, they might introduce him. Jim Shooter said this, quote, The bridge between plasma and earth here and now, unquote, is what War Dancer is to Defiant Comics. So, he plays a major role in the Defiant Universe, and you just stay tuned. Yeah, could be interesting. Okay, the next big news we have is that Caliber Press, publisher of Dead World, yes, Dead World, if anybody follows those unique comics, has merged with Steinberg Corporation. Effective September 1st, there will be no changes in Caliber titles, but, at this point, but, one of the good events coming out of this is, Caliber will be given an increased advertising budget. Hopefully it'll be something similar to like what they did with Plasm and that to just advertise massive mass advertisement on the market. So hopefully that'll hit, bring out some of the smaller presses. Yes, yes, yes. yes also, yes. beginning in December, Spider-Man Mutant Agenda, Agenda begins Agenda. a weekly crossover involving, it's the first crossover involving a daily newspaper strip and a mini series of a regular comic book. It's a three issue series. Uh, in addition, Marvel will be pu publishing issue, an issue zero album that you can use to store all the strips in. Uh, it's going to be the storyline is going to feature Spidey and the Beast trying to stop the brand corporation's attempt to destroy all the mutants of the world. Okay, now tell me this isn't a money getter here on this one because not only do you have to pay maybe dollar seventy five or two fifty for the comic, but you're going to have to spend thirty five cents a day for the paper every day. So, and we all know the Buffalo News is not worth 35 cents. No, it's not. At so, least not all of it. That's it. Okay. And that's it for the news this week. Yeah. Uh, next week we'll have more news. Uh, going on, generally we have a top six now, a weekly top six of what's selling in the area. Uh, around the country, we don't have an exact one this week, so we're going to give you an approximation of some of the sales. Uh, locally, Spawn is a big one. The... Uh, Batman's and Superman's. Of course, Superman's still selling all the titles. Venom's there. still selling hot, hot um, seller. Around the country, the Ultraverse, the Malibu series, all of the titles. It's interesting. In some areas, they're going for less than cover. In other Ultraverse. areas, in other areas, they're going for uh, you know double double cover. So I mean, all different areas of the country uh, bring about different things with each book. Yeah. So. Let's get on to our, uh, normally we do our reviews here, and we will start with Steve. We'll give his first, me. his first review of the day. Okay, my first review is 
Battletide 2, number two. This one's a unique book. It's got a nice fold-out cover. Very, very nice, colorful. Um, and a nice character inside, which is the body of Archdemon Terramagnia in the mind of Benzel. Now, he's fighting Death's Head, supposedly going to kill Death's Head. Um, he put a mind virus into Death's Head, and uh, he wants to kill Death's Head. Death Head 2, I'm sorry. And Death Head with Temploid and Kill Power trying to destroy him. And what happens is this demon kills Temploid, which was controlling this virus inside of Death's Head. And then Kill Power sacrifices his life to come back to Earth with Death's Head and destroy this. It's a pretty interesting book. Um, Dan Arbnett and Andy Lanning. The story is by, and they did the original Death's Head series. Overall, I gave this one a three. It was a really good book, and I would it's Dower 75 from Marvel, and I would definitely recommend it. Okay, great. Okay, my first one this week is an interesting one. This one is called Rib. This is by Andrew Ford and AMF Comics out of Falconer, New York. Rib is a mini comic about a worm. This one's the first issue. It's not it's not that good. The second issue is pretty good. It's about a worm living in a human world, uh, deals with racism, politics, pop culture through this. Uh, book. I liked it. The second issue, this one here, the quality picked up a lot. Um, let's see. Uh, the main complaint I have is the lettering. The lettering's not very good. If uh, if he improved his lettering or got somebody to do it, I think this is a really good book. Uh, it's only 50 cents. It's from AMF Comics, PO Box 168, Falconry, New York, 14733-0168. One, one, uh, I give it two stars, and if you like it, go. Uh, you can write us, or if you can dig it up, it's worth getting. Okay. Cool. Okay, for my second one, I'm going with a Virus Number Four. It's from Dark Horse Comics. Sells for two fifty. This one was different. I picked it up because I liked the cover. The cover looked really unique. The um, colors inside, they're good. Very neutral, back to the basics, but they're very good. This deals with. I picked it up on part four. This one deals with these people are on a ship and a computer uh, disc takes over the ship and it's combining body parts with mechanical parts to try and destroy everybody. Um, I'm not going to tell you how the story ends because it was a really good series. I'd pick up all four parts. The color was good, the story was good, the art was good. The overall reaction, I'm giving it a good. I, I would pick it up. Great. Virus. I've seen that. Virus. I thought about picking it up before. Okay, my next one this week is um, Super Patriot number two. This is from Image. It's $1.95. Eric Larson is the creator and scripter. Keith Griffin wrote the story. Um, and let's see. Dave Johnson does the pencils and inks. This is similar to Captain America, yet it is very different. Uh, I liked it a lot. As you can see, the color is fantastic. The art is very, very good. Um, the, over the overall quality is great. I would, I would definitely pick this book up. I liked it a lot. I give this one here uh, three stars. It's worth it. Pick it up. I'm getting some good picks this week. Yes. Okay, for my next one. Deathlock Annual Number Two, with the introduction of a new character named Tracer. Um, this one deals with, well, first of all, I'll show you some artwork inside, which the artwork, the artwork wasn't bad. Um, basic colors again, like I said, but as for other than basic colors, the storyline was good. This one deals with, there's this corporation that has a simulator and he's trying to figure out ways to beat all the superheroes. This guy that named Tracer, which is his new code name. And he tries against Spider-Man. He can't beat him on the simulator or a couple of the other ones. Well, he comes across Deathlock, and he wants to try and beat Deathlock. So instead of going through a simulator, he actually goes after him. And Deathlock's at a carnival with his son, and things start happening. Leads to one thing to another. Well, they come face to face. Well, once they hook up against each other, it's a pretty good battle. Um, it didn't leave you hanging, but it didn't explain too much why they were using a simulator and why these people just came in. Um, it's not bad for a start of a new character, but I don't think I'm going to follow the series. I really, really didn't like it if Tracer comes out with his own series like they said he would. I only gave this one a one. Mm -hmm. Great. See iffy. You. See you, Marvel. See you, Marvel. Okay, I've got, usually we only do like four a week, but I've got so many. Over the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing like twice as many as Steve, and I'm going to be whipping, whipping through them. Um, I'm well, I got be, one more. I'm going to be doing uh, two at a. You got one more? I got one okay, more. Okay, I'm going to. I'll do three now. I'll let Steve do his one, and then I'll do three more. They're going to be quick reviews. This one here is Street Fighter number one. 
This is from Malibu. Yes, it's the same Street Fighter you play on Nintendo. It's a bit pricey at $2.95. Len Straczewski is the writer. Don Hilsman does pencils. Jeff Whiting does inks. If you like the game, you should like the book. It's a decent story. I gave it one star. Next we have Jack Kirby's Teen Agents, number one of four. This is from Topps Comics. It comes poly bag with three trading cards, which I don't have with me. But uh, Kurt Busiek does the writing. Uh, Neil Volks does pencils. John Beatty does inks. There's a preview of a Silver Star. It's a story in the back of the book. That's an old Jack Kirby story uh, written about 10 years ago. Uh, I give this one two, or, yeah, two stars. I like this one a lot, too. It's, it's a good cool. one. And last one here. This one is uh, classic Star Wars number 12. It's 250. Archie Goodwin is the writer with Al Williamson uh, doing the art. It's not a bad story, but I left Star Wars 15 years ago, and I would not read this again. I guess some people are, like, are stuck with Star Wars here. And uh, I give it one star. Ooh. Ooh, bad way to cut it down. Okay, for my last one, I'm going with Magneto number zero, Twisting of a Soul. Now this, this is a different kind of book because I'll explain a little bit. Um, the stories that are on here are two stories. One of them originated in X-Men Classic number 19. Yes, the artwork is early, like I say like I say on different shows, early-ish. Steve uh, doesn't like that early. No, the first one, the original printing of Fire of the Sky was in uh, Classic X-Men number 19, and the second story, I, Magneto, was in original X-Men Classics number 12. The good thing about this is it's free. If they're charging for it, it's a ripoff. okay? These, um, when they ordered a certain amount of comic, if they charge two or three dollars, fine, but I've seen these already priced up to thirteen dollars, anywhere from seven to thirteen dollars. It's ridiculous. The dealers got these for nothing. They should be giving to regular customers. They're not. This book right here, it wasn't bad. It explains where Magneto's coming from, what happened to his family. I'm going to stick with the series. I gave this a good rating, even though I didn't like the artwork and the coloring, but like I said, if it's selling for a lot of money, tell the dealer, hey, you're ripping me off. You heard that from comics. TV. You're ripping me off. You heard that from comics TV. <laughs> they're they're charging because it's a it's a because it's a no, number zero is no, what it is. Number zero and there's probably a low print run on it too. No. How do you? Know? There was over five hundred thousand print and that's a very high print. He's lying. Don't listen. To He's me. lying. <laughs> I don't know. He's ugly too. <laughs> okay, my uh, I've got three more quick ones here. This one is Spoof Comics number nineteen. Uh, it's called Green Lanterns. I got it because it looked funny. I like the cover. Uh, it's a black and white. Uh, let's see. Roger Brown writes. Shannon London Gallant does the pencils. The cover looked good. Is the story. The story. No, nah, it's not X-ray. The story is mediocre. Don't bother. It's half a star. Uh, next, we've got uh, Captain Canuck, Reborn Number Zero. I previewed this one uh, about a month ago. It's from Sample Comics. It was only 95 cents. 15-page uh, story. Uh, I liked it. It was good. It's two stars for this one. And last one this week is this is floaters number one of five this is from dark horse comics and uh comics from spike this is the spike lee stuff i previewed this one too uh i don't know why i previewed it i don't like the art uh the story was pretty good until it became a black white issue uh let uh, lee's brother Sinke is co-writer on the story i'm sorry but if this had been a straightforward book i probably would have um i probably would have liked the series but when it became a black and white thing, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Racial. Yeah, it became, it was like a, they're rainbow people, which is cool. Everybody's interracial mixed and everybody's the same. But then there's, there happens to be a group of people who are taking these mighty white pills to make them whiter. So then he's got these white people trying to get these other people. And, I, I want to say something on this. Oh, wait, I don't. Oh. Zero stars, sorry. Zero star. I didn't even know. Okay, I don't one. like what the publishers are starting to do. They're starting to put racial slurs and racial fights and starting all kinds of prejudice in comic books to reach out to the younger generation and I don't like that because there's more and more out on the market right now and I really think it's ridiculous and if I was you I would say something uh, write a letter to the publishers there's addresses in comics write a letter to them and tell them you, you don't agree with what they're doing because I don't I don't like being racial like that it shouldn't be brought into comics something that everybody's supposed to enjoy um, real quickly, usually we do uh, an industry book or something. Uh, we're going to be starting, I think in a few weeks, we're going to start uh, like an industry review of the industry itself. We're going to do certain publishers. We're going to show titles, tell who, who the main publisher is and all kinds of stuff yeah. like that. Um, 
Right now, this is uh, this is Vantage. This comes out, I don't know how often, once a month, must once be. Once a month. It's $1.50. Uh, it's got some good news and information in it, but uh, I've got a thing against it because uh, it, it's called Information for the Serious Comic Book Investor. And I got a thing about that. I, I mean, it's it's not for people. I mean, it's got good news and, and it's got some good stuff in it, uh, but it's made for people who are uh, out there to make money. And there are people there, but not us. I don't like. It. Okay, um, how are we run on time? Fifteen. Fifteen. Okay, we're doing good. So, let's see. We're gonna do our previews now. Every week we do previews of a couple books each that we think uh, we like. We think might be might be decent to, decent up. to come out. Um, mm -hmm. Mine mine are from uh, October. Uh, there should be out this month. Um, and mine are from anywhere from November to December. All right. October. Okay. Um, you have some this week? Yeah, I got two of them. I got two. Okay, go ahead. Okay, I'm going to start with X Factor number 98. Um, it's random versus havoc, and it's an all-out war breaks out between mutants and humans. A major new villainous makes her debut. Now, this should be an interesting. I like Havoc in the first place. It's sort of unique. Does he create it? What? Does he create it? Yeah. It's, it's different. This one, I don't know. It just seems, here's another interracial thing, mutants and humans. But this one, they're supposed to be funny. So we're going to have to stick with it. Shipping date is November 11th. Sells for $1.25. All right. So. Okay, my first one this week that I'm picking is Freddy's Last Dance, number one of five. This is from MBS Publishing. Stephen Donovan is the writer with Eric Bradbury doing the art. He's best known for his 2000 AD series. Uh, this 295 black and white book, which usually the books I pick are black and white. This one, uh, most of today's weren't though. Uh, it's based on a true events that happened in Liverpool, England. Uh, and the teenager on his first night out witnesses a murder and is hunted by the police. Uh, in turn, uh, events happen throughout the book. It looks pretty good. Sounds good. I like. I like what it looks. Uh, small press product. You're gonna have to dig for it. Uh, probably nobody carrying it. You might have to order it. So if you like it, take a look. It's 2.95. Check out your local store. If they don't have it, order it. Cool. Okay. For my next one, I'm going with the Dark Stars number 16. Former Dark Star deputy John Flynn, now the Deadly Annihilator 171, is on a rampage. And only one thing seems capable of stopping him, and it's not the Dark Stars. So um, this one sounds interesting. It seems like it's going to be probably like an average who can kill who in this book. But I like the Annihilator 171. I got to catch a copy of what he was in, and it, he messes with everybody. So shipping date is December 9th. It's dollar seventy-five. It's from Marvel. Pick it up. Marvel. Was a, he did two, he did two Marvel reviews Ooh. or previews if you couldn't tell. Shame, shame. Okay, my last pick of this week is this is a return from who? But the big green guys with the hard shells. Yes, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume Two Number One is coming this month. It should be out. It might be out now. Mirage is the publisher, of course. They're releasing this new series in full color. It's by Jim Lawson and Jason Temujin Minor. Uh, features a full color wraparound cover. It looks pretty nice. It's done by AC Farley. If you've see ben, seen any of his work, uh, you know what he can do, and this cover looks great. Uh, this issue reveals insights into each of the characters that you might not have known, and this is all going to lead into stories throughout the series. Cool. Uh, they're they're going to arc in and out throughout the whole series. Uh, Flashbacks. All different things that they can come up with here. They don't build on the whole thing, so it's got something to work with. Uh, I think this will be even better than the first series. Uh, it, I don't know how the inside looks, but the cover didn't look as cartoonish. So, for two seventy-five, uh, it looks like a good deal. So you might want to check it out. Cool. Now, we've got a special interview with Charles Barnett. As we said at the beginning of the show, he is current anchor on ElfQuest. Uh, he's worked on Captain. He's got a project coming out, a Captain America project. This supposed to be. It's not even scheduled yet. It's all done. Waiting for scheduling. He's got some. He's did, worked on. Uh, mm -hmm. He's done, well, he's done, uh, la, 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 la. I don't know if he did any Wolverine itself, but he's done a lot of other projects. So why don't you take a look at this, and we'll be back in a minute. Mike, and we're here at Chronicles over on Elmwood with Charles Burnett. He's an artist and maker. He's done a lot of uh, work before, including uh, Captain America, Incredible Hulk, Avengers, Deathstroke, Terminator, New Titans, Rye, Magnus, uh, a lot of other things. And currently, he's working on... ElfQuest, The Hidden Years. 
Right, and I've uh, been working on it for, see, this is going to be the sixth issue of the regular title that we've been working on. Uh, How long have you been with uh, UpQuest? How long is that, six issues? Uh, well, I've actually been with them since about the end of the, towards the end of last year. Yeah. I did uh, a couple issues of their other title called uh, New Blood, and then they put me on to uh, the regular Hidden Years title after that. And how did you get hooked up with UpQuest? Uh, I was very fortunate. I met Richard at a con. Uh, I met him in Syracuse at the Make-A-Wish convention that they had in 1991. And uh, he saw what I was thinking at the time, uh, liked it, then found out that I lived very close to where he was, and that basically put the germ in his, in his head. Mm -hmm. uh, it wasn't until, God, almost uh, six months later that, uh, that, that I even heard from him again. Oh, yeah. And then uh, a couple more meetings after that, and uh, eventually this past April, not the one that which April 92 was when we first uh, uh, got together and did uh, the two issues of uh, New Blood that I did. You like doing of course? Yeah, you know it's interesting because you uh, after a while you're doing ro you're doing computers and machine guns and cars and cityscapes and all this. It's kind of nice to do rocks and trees right. yeah. and birds and a horse or something like that from time to time. It's yeah. really nice. Yeah, it's it's. It helps me ke just keep changing gears, you know, mm -hmm. so that so that I don't get bored and tired with any one thing. Right. The second artist on it. Oh my God! No, no, no. The inker is God. Look, look. Let me explain. Once you're done, all right. Once I'm done inking something, okay. I take an eraser and I erase everything that the penciler ever did. All that's left is my ink. Uh -huh. so, so you are it. I'm it. Without you, there is no comic That's hey. Every time that I get a job that's already laid. I'm the one that has to get it back on schedule. The anchor very often is an anchor man of the team because uh, whether it's problems, the writer has trouble figuring out what happens in the story so that the story is late getting to the penciler. Mm -hmm. The penciler has trouble with the editor or whatever and things have to be redrawn. By the time it gets to me, it still has to ship at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so right. that I usually, usually the anchor has to pick up the slack, as it were, you know, so, that, so that the book ships when it's supposed to. Mm. Who are some of your influences? Well, my teacher uh, was Joe Sinnott. Uh, you, you know, okay, you've met him, all right. Uh, Joe is, there's nobody better to learn from. Uh, and uh, I, he lives about half an hour, 45 minutes north of where I used to live. Now he only lives 15 minutes north because I just bought a house. And um, I would go to his house. I went to his house for like 14 years, oh, really? uh, every couple of months with whatever I'd drawn in the interim and uh, he'd take a piece of tracing paper and just lay it over the top and then just wail on the tracing paper showing me what I should have done oh, yeah? and that's how I learned wow. yeah uh, the, uh, one of the other major influences on me has been Dan Green uh, he also lives fairly close to where I am uh, Joe's style is a very tight very clean uh, kind of style and uh, Dan's style is almost the antithesis of it. It's extremely loose very moody you know he likes to call it raunchy and um, it, what I got from that was it, it helped me update my style a little bit, you know, dealing with Dan. Uh, Joe's style is very classic, right. whereas Dan's style has a tendency to be a little bit more contemporary first, uh, for the first issue. This is so new it hasn't even been scheduled yet. Uh, and, uh, so it could come out next year? It'll probably be coming out maybe, uh, they've, they've told me sometime early next year, yeah. maybe March or April or something. Um, now from completion to something like this to inks and production and everything what's what's the time frame on that well it again depends on uh, how far behind schedule you're running i mean I, the fastest a book has ever come out that i finished uh, i finished a book that was really running late one time and it was on the stands two weeks later really right wow. uh whereas as a general rule um it's usually about anywhere from four weeks to two months by the time the thing comes out. Now, do you do, you do you use strictly brushes? No, 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 no. I use brush and uh, croco pen um, on 102. <laughs> uh, I don't use any, I don't use any uh, mechanical pens. I don't use rapidographs or anything. Uh, all the mechanical work that you see, like the computers and stuff, uh, I use, oh, like this area up in here. I just, um, all that is, is, uh, uh, what the heck it's called? A rollerball, you know, it's just a regular, yeah, it's just a roller pen. Hmm. A uniball, that's what it is. Just straight, for straight lines? Yeah, uh, yeah, the, the thing about it is that you, you learn tricks with it after a while. Oh, yeah. uh, how to make a thinner line than it would normally make, oh, really? so on, yeah, right. Uh, Dr. Doom's a bad guy in this thing. Uh, 
most of the story takes place on an orbital platform uh, that's run by S.H.I.E.L.D. Who else? <laughs> when I don't have anything sitting in my drawer that has to be done, mm -hmm. I start climbing the walls. Yeah. I could have 50 pages that have to be done within the next four weeks. And I'm perfectly relaxed. It's right. perfect. I know it's not a problem. I can handle it, and uh, I can just I can sit down and watch TV all evening with my wife and have a nice time. Yeah. All right. But if I even if I know that work is coming, if there, you know, uh, just recently uh, I got handed a, a three or four week uh, delay on one of the Elf Quest things because they were having story conferences. All right. I knew the stuff was coming. Mm -hmm. But I was still like right. climbing the walls. Right. All right. It's a good thing I had some other stuff that that I was working on at the time. Okay. Good interview, and uh, we plan on having interviews, maybe not weekly, every or every other week, every maybe once every, a month. Maybe more. Once we're gonna try. We're going. Uh, actually, when this show airs, we're gonna be in Philadelphia at the Comic Fest. Hopefully, we're gonna get some interviews while we're there. Um, we're gonna try and get as many interviews as we can. We've, we're building up a little bit. It's getting good. good. Okay, now we do what we call our convention mention. This is where we tell you what's coming up in the area. Uh, all throughout Western New York, whenever we can find them. Uh, if for some reason people don't write us and tell us when they are, we have to dig them up. Now, we've got some beefs to talk about here. Yes. OTB shows, I try not to put anybody down, but OTB shows runs a lot of the shows in the Western New York area. Uh, I've called them several times trying to request them to get back to me so we can keep in touch you know, with what's going on. The fair show, there was a fair uh, sh a show scheduled at the fairgrounds two weeks ago. We had no idea. We were, we were advertising it for uh, two months, only mm -hmm. to find out when we get there that it's, it's postponed. It's postponed until, well, actually, when we got there, they said that it was canceled. Yeah. Well, when I called uh, OTB's line, they said that it was uh, on their answer machine, said it was postponed. No time went. Uh, we were kind of... Kind disappointed. Of, yes, disappointed is a, is a good word. Uh, nice, nice at St. John has a show every month, uh, second Wednesday, I believe it is. Uh, this week it's or this month it's October 13th. It's from 6:30 to 9 o'clock. Uh, the Knights of St. John is on Union Road near William Street in Cheektowaga. Mm -hmm. Admission is only 50 cents. It's a card and comic show, so you can guess that there'll be more cards and comics as usual. Yeah, and there is a show on October 17th in Fredonia at the Masonic Lou Lounge Lodge. Masonic Lodge. Masonic. 320 Masonic Lodge. Sorry, 321 East Main Street. Also October 17th at the American Legion Post in Buffalo Avenue in Niagara Falls from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Admission is only two bucks. Yeah, there's a couple shows there. I mean, it's worth hitting them. Uh, like I picked, I went, I did hit one at Post Falcons uh, a few days ago. I got a couple books at half off. I mean, brand new books. Good deal. I'm, a lot of these shows, a lot of the dealers bring a lot of the overstock stuff that only came out at the beginning of the month or in the middle of the month, and they sell at half price. You can get a lot of good deals there. Yeah, th this uh, this show. Uh, had three or four comic dealers to like 15 card dealers. So it was only 50 cents to get in though. Uh, on Wednesday, October 20th, another Wednesday, there's a show at the Tonawanda Amvets Post, uh, 600 Ward Road. This is from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. It is free.